Hello everyone, here is another video with OrbTube channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about allylic bromination reaction. Let's start this reaction with a very simple example. First, light breaks bromine molecule and forms bromine radical. And then bromine radical abstracts hydrogen on this position and produces this radical. The position next to the double bond called allylic position. Radical on this position is very stable even more than tertiary radical because of the resonance. This radical can make resonance and it has another structure. In the next step, this radical, allyl radical, reacts with another bromine and we have allylic bromination reaction. But performing this reaction with bromine has a huge problem. We shouldn't have large concentration of bromine because boromine also can have addition reaction with alkene. So instead of boromine, we use another reagent as a source of boromine. NBS is a source for boromine and the structure of NBS is this structure. And the name of this compound, it is N-boromosuccinimide. This compound always have a trace of bromine for initiating reaction. So the first step of reaction is exactly like a reaction with Br2. So Br radicals abstract one hydrogen from allylic position and forms an allyl radical plus HBr. Then this HBr can react with N-boromosuccinimide or NBS. Reaction of these two compounds forms another Br2 molecule plus succinamide. So then this bromine can go through another cycle in the mechanism and always the concentration of bromine remain very low so we don't have the possibility for reaction of Br2 with this double bond. Let's have more example. Here is next example. First, we need to identify the allylic positions. These two carbons are attached to the double bond and they are allylic position. So this hydrogen, they can be replaced by bromine. So Br radicals abstract one of these hydrogen and it forms allylic radical. This allylic radical has another resonance form. Then we have double bond here and radical here. But these two resonance structure, they are identical and they produce same product. Then for the next step, this radical take one boromine atom and make a CBR bond. So instead of having radical, on carbon, we have a bond between that carbon and boromine. If we draw this structure, we have same product in this case. Here is another example. Again, we need to identify the allylic position. These two carbon are allylic position and they are identical. So it doesn't matter we put radicals on the left or right carbon. Then we can have resonance form. And then these electrons come here and this electron goes there. So in the next resonance form, we have double bond here. And we have this carbon as a radical. Then these two radicals, they are not identical. So they can produce two different products. 
If instead of radical we put bromine on this carbon, we get this compound. And if we put bromine on that carbon, we get CH2Br. The position of double bond in the first product and the reactants are the same. But the position of double bond in the second product is different. This product also called allylic shift product. If we want to know which of these products are major product, normally the one that double bond has more substitution is the major product. Here the double bond has two alkyl group and here on the second compound double bond has three alkyl group. So this is our major product. Here is the next example. Again, NBS and light, we need to identify the allylic position. This carbon is next to the double bond and it is allylic position. But this carbon also is next to the benzene ring. The name of this type of carbon is benzylic. Benzylic carbon is like allylic carbon and we can have allylic reaction on that carbon. Here is a trend for the stability of radicals. Primary, secondary, tertiary. After tertiary, we have allylic radical and benzylic normally is even better than allylic. But one thing is different in benzylic radical is benzylic radical has five resonance form, but the product always keep the benzene ring unchanged. So we are not going to move double bond out of the benzene ring. So we only have one product, but for allylic position, we may have one or two product depending to the structure. So first step, the allylic carbon converts to the radical. This structure, we have resonance again, but this resonance form and the original structure, they are identical. Then I'm just going to use the first one. If I put bromine instead of the radical, then we have this compound as a product. Here I also would like to have one example for benzylic position. This carbon, it is in benzylic position, it is attached to the benzene ring, and then it easily form a radical during the reaction with NBS, then this carbon turns to radical. And the next step, this radical abstract bromine from Br2, and then it turns to this compound. When we have benzylic radicals, we don't draw the resonance form and we just convert it to the product. Here is another example. Again, we need to identify allylic carbons. These carbons, all these four, they are allylic carbon, but they are all identical because this molecule has two plane of symmetry and all these four carbon, they are identical. So I'm going to choose only one of them. So here we have double bond and I choose to put radical on this carbon. Then like the other problems, we have resonance and then we get another And then both of these resonance form, they can abstract bromine and produce the product. So if I replace these radicals with bromines, then I get the structure for first compound. And if I replace this radical with bromine, then I get the structure for second one. In this example, we have two different types of allylic carbon. This allylic carbon, it is secondary, and this carbon, it is tertiary radicals. We know bromination reaction is very selective, and it always 
happens on the more stable radicals. So in this case, tertiary radicals is better than secondary. Both of them they're allylic, but tertiary allylic is more stable than secondary allylic. So we have radicals on this position, and when we have resonance, double bond comes here and radical push to the third carbon. Then we have this structure here and radical on this carbon. Then if I convert this radical, the first radical to the bromine, instead of radical, I put bromine here. And I do the same thing for the second one. And then we have the structure for both of our product. In this example, again, we have two different allylic position. This carbon is secondary allylic, and this carbon is tertiary allylic. So again, tertiary radical forms during this reaction. And then we have resonance. So double bond moves here and radical here. Then if I put bromine, instead of this radical, I have a structure of product. Then here are the two products in this reaction. And here is the last example. In this example, we have two allylic position and both of them, they are secondary. So we are going to have two different allylic radical in this reaction. If the left allylic carbon converts to the radical, then here is our radical. And if the allylic carbon on the right side of double bond converts to the radical, then we have this structure for our second radical. Both of these radical, they can have resonance form. So I'm going to derive their resonance form to see if they are identical or they are different. For first radical, here is the resonance form. Then we have double bond here and the radical move to the third carbon. And if we have resonance here, carbon one, two, three. Then, then carbon one and two, they have double bond and carbon three turns to radical. As you can see here, all these radicals, they have different structure. So if we put bromine instead of any of these radicals on each carbon, then we get different product. Here is the first structure. Here is the second structure. Then here we have the third product. And here we have the fourth one. So this reaction has four different products. Thank you for watching this video. To watch more video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.